Hi everyone and welcome to video number 26. Now we're almost coming towards the end of the course ladies and gentlemen. So far in section 4, the last section of the course, we've been looking at life in Nazi Germany, how the policies of the Nazis affected and impacted the lives of German people 1933 to 1939. Now the final two videos looking at the course. Here we're going to look at how the Nazi policies affected non-German people according to the Nazis definition of that. So we're looking at how the Nazis treated minorities. Now the next video we'll look at possibly the most famous case of all the Jews, how the Nazis dealt with as they saw the problem of the Jews. This video, we're looking at all of the other groups, the other minority groups in Germany. What did the Nazis do? How did they deal with these groups? 1933 to 1939. So hopefully this video will give you an idea of the Nazi impact on other minorities in Germany during those years. Now, you've got to think of possibly one of the most controversial and one of the most famous Nazi policies, the idea of racial purity. Hitler and the Nazis had this idea of the master race, to use the German word Herrenvolk. And they thought, right, the Aryan, in other words, the German people were the master race, blonde, blue eyed, tall, strong, muscular, healthy. That was Hitler's vision, image of the master race. And he wanted to keep that pure. Think back to some of the earlier videos where we looked at the idea of marriage. He introduced something called selective breeding, to give it his posh, posh word, eugenics, E-U-G, E-N-I-C-S, eugenics. The idea that somehow the master race will be free from contamination, to use the German Nazi word at that time. In other words, the Aryans would avoid contact with other races, with other minority groups, who the Nazis referred to as Untermenschen. Unter meaning under or sub. Menschen, men or humans. Untermenschen, subhuman. So for the Nazis, the Herrenvolk, the master race, should not come into contact in any way with the Untermensch the subhumans. That was the Nazi idea. And in this video, we'll look at how the Nazis tried to keep the Herrenvolk or master race away from the Untermenschen. Now, the first group we'll have a look at were the Slavs, S-L-A-V-S. The Slavs, an ethnic group which swept across and settled in Eastern Europe from Asia. The Slavs, Eastern Europeans, countries like Poland, Russia. Now, the Nazi idea there, the Slavs they reviewed as not the master race, so they did not want them getting involved with the master race. The Nazi idea and message was very straightforward. Send the Slavs to the concentration camps, especially after the start of World War II, when the Nazis moved east and swept into Poland and then into USSR, Slavs were arrested and sent to the camps or to work for the Germans. So that's the first group, the Slavs, basically concentration camp. The second group, now at the time Hitler and the Nazis referred to them as gypsies, Today's word we tend to use more is travellers. But for the Nazis, the gypsies, as they called them, they were non-Aryan because they came from a group of people known as the Roma. The Nazis saw them as a threat, even though out of a population of more than 60 million, there were only 30,000 of these Roma people or gypsies. The Nazis saw them as a threat. They used to travel around. Well, that didn't suit the Nazi ideas 
because according to the Nazis, everyone should be helping the state, helping the country, helping Germany. So the Nazis said that this group of people, these gypsies, they're not paying enough tax. They were accused of not working or being work shy. In other words, they were not helping Germany become great. So for the Nazis, they would have to be dealt with. 1935, the Nazis passed a law. Remember, Hitler can pass all of his laws now because he's got the power. He doesn't have to use the Parliament or the Reichstag because he's got the power. Can you remember the act? Bonus points if you said the Enabling Act. So the Nazis passed the law, 1935, banning marriage between Germans and gypsies. Often, gypsies were also sent to the concentration camps, just like the Slavs. 1938, all gypsies had to register with the authorities and a decree or a government order was released, it was issued and it was passed. Listen to the language, ladies and gentlemen. The decree was passed for the struggle against the gypsy plague. Well, what a word to use to describe people, a plague. Wow, that shows you the Nazis ideas and how they were willing to treat other minority groups, in this case, the gypsies. From 1939, gypsies could be forcibly removed from Germany. So that second group, the gypsies, were treated harshly by the Nazis. Now we come to the third group, homosexuals, homosexual people. Now, in Nazi Germany, quite simply, homosexuality was illegal. Why would that be? It's going against the Nazi idea of family and children. The Nazis thought that homosexuality was lowering moral standards. 1936, Himmler, remember, leader of the SS, uh, he set up a central office for combating homosexuality. So the SS are getting involved and saying, no, we think homosexuality is wrong and we will try to stop it here in Nazi Germany. By 1938, 8,000 homosexuals, concentration camp. So that's the third group. Can you see a, a sort of link emerging here? Slavs, gypsies, homosexuals all ended up in the concentration camps. The fourth group, the fourth minority group, possibly the most controversial. Have a listen and see what you think. Disabled people. Now, the Nazi view was quite clear. Posters were put up saying, look, disabled people are a burden on our society because they cost money, money which could be spent on making Germany great, increasing the army or weaponry or stuff like that. That was the Nazi view. They also argued that disabled people are weakening the racial purity, the idea of strength, the master race, the Herrenvolk. 1933, a law was passed, a law for the prevention of hereditarily diseased offspring. The Nazis believed that some of the disabilities were hereditary and would pass down through the generations. They did not want that because they are thinking that will weaken German people. That was their thinking. Now, who's involved in this act? Alcoholics, people who are mentally ill, people who suffer from epilepsy, the deaf, the blind. So there's a wide range of disabilities there, ladies and gentlemen. And the Nazi answer to this problem, as they saw it, compulsory sterilization. They did not want these people to have children because they feared it would weaken the master race. So sadly, unbelievably, by 1939, over 400,000 cases of compulsory sterilization had 
taken place. That's quite a shocking statistic. I'll just leave that with you for a minute or two to have a think about. Unbelievably then, maybe things got even worse. The Nazis introduced from 1939 onwards something called the T4 program. And here, babies with mental or physical disabilities, they were basically compulsory euthanasia. In other words, they were killed. Either drugs were administered or even more cruelly, they were starved. So can we see here that the Nazi idea of racial purity has gone to such an extreme that they are willing to kill their own citizens. Wow. What can you say? This was the treatment for the disabled people in Nazi Germany. Right. Two more groups left. Group number five, vagrants. Usually men, homeless, often travelled around Germany, probably looking for work. A sort of more medieval word that is sometimes used to describe them, beggars. Now, 1938, 100,000 vagrants in the concentration camp. From the Nazi perspective, the Nazi opinion of vagrants, they are not contributing to Germany. They are a drain on Germany, Therefore, they must be dealt with severely. Camp. The final group, ladies and gentlemen. Black people in Germany. Well, the Nazis regarded blacks as untermensch, subhuman. 1935, it was a similar situation as the gypsies. Marriages between Aryan the master race, the Heron Volk, and black people were banned. Marriages were banned, 1935. One of the earlier videos, I mentioned the Berlin Olympics, 1936, and a great American black athlete called Jesse Owens won four gold medals. Try and remember, though, Hitler's reaction to that. He was outraged because here we had a black athlete showing that he was the best athlete in the world. That did not fit in with the Nazi idea of black people as untermensch. How can they be subhuman when they were the best in the world and beating the white German athletes? So Hitler was enraged. He was outraged. That gives you an, a view as to how the Nazis viewed black people. After World War I, Germany surrendered and there was a piece of land sort of on the border between France and Germany in West Germany called the Rhineland there by the River Rhine and some American soldiers were stationed there after World War I and of course some of those American soldiers were black. Well over time some of the black American soldiers fathered children with white German women. And the children, of course, were mixed race. Hmm. What would the Nazis think of that when they come to power and they see these mixed race children? How would that fit in with their idea of racial purity? Of course, they would be very, very unhappy with that. Their answer? Those children, the mixed race children, from black American soldiers and white German mothers, again, they were sterilized. The idea of racial purity, they did not want them weakening, as they saw it, the German master race. So, it's a controversial subject and it's not a very nice subject, but it's one that must be looked at and addressed, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we've seen how the Nazis treated other minority groups in Germany 1933 to 1939. Of course, the, their most famous treatment of a minority was their treatment of the Jews. 
And because that is so special and there's such a lot of information there, I'll put that in a video all on its own. So that's the next video that's coming. How the Nazis treated the minority group, the Jews. As ever, I hope this has been useful for you. Speak to you soon. Bye now.